can see why you're really here. We're face to face and it's great. You don't even know why you're confused. It's adorable. Well, it's nice to see you want to learn and that's a change. Open your eyes, let's begin. Yeah, it's really me. It's us me. Breathe it in. I know it's a lot. The brain, the cuteness. When you're staring at a VTuber. I did the research for you. You're welcome. Hey there, my name is Awesome Fire and welcome back to my channel. This is where I tell you everything I learned about a subject that I research after watching anime, TV shows, movies, or playing video games and think to myself, is that the story based on something else? What did the creator take as inspiration from ancient myths or historical figures? Do I have my laptop open while I watch my TV shows and movies or play games? Yes. We will be looking at Disney's 2016 film Moana. This tells the story of Moana, daughter of a chief of a Polynesian village. Unknowingly, she is chosen by the ocean to search for Maui and return the heart of Tefiti. Since Maui stole it for selfish reasons that we don't even know why, after Moana convinces Maui he must return the heart in order to save her village, guided by her grandmother. The song, You're Welcome, Maui sings about the great things he brought to mankind making him a hero. However, does the song tell everything about Maui besides his accomplishments? But before we talk about the legends of Maui, let's look into the Polynesian culture and the background. The origins of the legends and myths of Maui come from three regions stretching across the Pacific Ocean, what is referred as the Polynesian Triangle. In the north is Hawaii, southwest is New Zealand, and southeast is Easter Island. Central regions are the Tahitian group of islands, the islands of Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, the Society Islands group, the Herbie Islands. Reason I mention this is because due to the vast distance between the islands, and we all know how the myths are like the telephone game, well, there's various versions of the story. However, the central theme stays the same. Hawaii's ancient religious belief system is known as the animistic belief system containing various deities and spirits among the Tahitians and other Pacific Islanders who colonize Hawaii. Who is Maui? Well, he is a demigod from Polynesian mythology. He is a trickster and a shapeshifter. Maui was the son of Makea Tutara and Taranga. Maui was born prematurely, so she took a lock of her hair to wrap Maui in and literally threw him into the sea. Someone would then pull him from the ocean. Some versions say his father saved Maui and took him to the heavens. When Maui grew up, he went on a search to return back home to his family's home. He is the youngest of four brothers. Maui Taha, Maui Roto, Maui Pae, and Maui Waho, and his sister Hina, though some versions say that Hina is also either his mother or wife. There really isn't much about Maui's whereabouts growing up, so let's jump and talk about what he did that helped mankind. As we look at the connection of Maui and Moana and the real Maui, I thought it would be easier to explain the accomplishments he did by looking at the lyrics of the You're Welcome song. What has you thumped and pulled up the sky? When you were waddling, yay, high. Here is when the sky was too close to earth, that the leaves of the plants, they grew flat. People barely were able to walk and darkness surrounded the land for a really long time. Wanting to help out, Maui got help from his dad to lift the sky with all of their might. Or Maui went to visit a kahuna, priest or shaman, and with his help, Maui was given a magical tattoo and water from which he would gain strength, and then he was able to lift the sky at the top of Haleakala, meaning House of the Sun, which is the highest point on the island. This location is super important, and it will be mentioned later on. Who stole you fire from down below? Fire hasn't been discovered by man yet. Maui grew tired of eating raw meat and vegetables and didn't like seeing the people doing the same. Different versions range from him inventing, stealing, or discovering the fire. One version says that Maui goes to the underworld. His ancestress, 
Mawika gave him sparks of fire created from her fingernails. She gave him the sparks of fire but every time Maui accidentally lost or dropped the fire. Mawika got so frustrated with him. Finally she threw the last nail at Maui but missed and Maui ran away with the spark of fire and gave it to mankind. Another version tells how Maui witnessed smoke far from the distance and was super curious on what it was. After attempting to spy on the Aleula birds to watch how they created the fire, but each time he failed because the birds knew Maui was onto them. Maui forced the Aleula birds to teach him how they created the fire. At first, they tricked him and told him to use water plants. No fire was made and he grips the bird's neck so tight until finally giving in and tells him to use the wood, but later still punishes them by burning the crack on top of the bird's head, which explains why the adult Aleaula birds have that red crest for tricking Maui. Also, I last, so the, sun. the sun was moving too fast. Days were short and nights were long. Not good when it comes to growing crops. People would not be able to go fishing, let alone having so much to do and not enough hours. Hina, whom I mentioned before, was either the wife, mom, or sister, depending on the version you read. For real, I know it's confusing. She was complaining about how her kappa cloth wouldn't dry since the hours of the day were super short. Maui himself was annoyed that the sun was being super selfish, so Maui decided to climb up the top of Haleakala. There's a version where his mom told him to go to his grandmother and she will show him how to trick the sun. His grandmother told him to lay out bananas and wait until the sun slows down, eats or grabs the bananas. Well, dry bananas. Maui would then use magical lassos made from his sister's hair and snare the rays of the sun one by one. Maui threatens the sun either by beating the sun or he will beat the sun if he doesn't agree to slow down the days. The sun gives in and agrees to do so, but only the summer will have longer days and the winter will have shorter days. This will allow the people and the gods to have more hours during the day. For the islands I pull from the sea. I'm going to assume this happened after Maui returned home because it involves him being with his brothers. Maui was a horrible fisherman. He would constantly get teased by his brothers because he could only catch small fish. Maui is like, I'll show them. Fed up with the insult, he is giving the Manayakalani a magical fish hook from the underworld. Then one day, Maui rejoined with his brothers and this time he will prove that he can catch a large fish. The brothers are like, <sighs> then a large fish starts to rise close to the surface. The brothers can't believe this. Maui uses his Manaia Kalani and manages to catch a fish, but it was no fish. This thing was so massive that Maui told his brothers to paddle as fast as possible and instructed them to not look back. But one of his brothers witnessed new islands appear from the water, and these are the islands of Hawaii. Hina was extremely beautiful, and Kunaloa an evil eel longed for her beauty and companionship. But after being rejected by her, he became vengeful. If he can't have her, then no one else should. So he created a diversion of the stream and it begins to flood onto the cave drowning Hina. Maui arrives to help and destroys the dam with his Manayakalani and chases after the eel. Maui throws rocks and he actually thought that he was dead. But Kunaloa returns and continues to harass Hina. Hina calls Maui for help, and then Maui cuts Kunaloa into pieces and throws the pieces into the sea. It varies on what the pieces turn into. One version says that the blood that flowed down the stream became freshwater eels, and the pieces thrown became various sea creatures like saltwater eels. Another version says the head became a fish, the tail a conger eel, the body into different monsters of the sea, and blood into freshwater eels. However, most commonly known version says that Maui took the head of the eel and buried it in the ground and resulting coconut trees to grow. However, there's one thing about Maui that was left out from the movie. What is it you may ask? Well, Maui searching for immortality, leading to his death. He believed mankind should have the gift of immortality. Now hear me out. This is a loose connection. In the beginning of the film, 
The grandmother of Moana tells the story of Maui when he steals the heart of Te Fiti, leading to what we see in the film. Now, when Maui is born, his father forgets to say one thing in the chant that would provide the protection from death during the time of his birth. Maui would then search for immortality. One version says he went to look for Hinenui Tepo, the goddess of death. He turned his brothers into birds and he instructed them to wait until he had taken her heart. He entered her stomach up to her heart, but unfortunately the brothers woke her up and he was killed. Another version says that he shapeshifted as a worm or an insect. So um, he entered her in order to steal the heart and or then kill her and then exit through her mouth. But um, he was crushed and killed by the teeth of her or her legs. Yeah. Now I'm starting to wonder that if in the movie Moana, Tefiti is Hinanui Tepo because Maui steals the heart of Tefiti in the film. Yet again, Tefiti is Teka, a demon of earth and fire. We see her as a volcano goddess that could be Pele, the volcano and fire goddess. I mean, if Pele is the goddess of fire and volcanoes, her side of mother nature could be her as well. Because in the movie, after the fire is out, what is left could be rich soil for new plants and trees to grow. Hinanui Tepo being the goddess of death could also be associated with birth because death and birth are a part of cycle of life. I don't know if I'm making any sense or if I'm actually making any connections. So is the Maui and Moana similar to the Maui and Polynesian mythology? I would say yes. Maui in the film shows a very selfish personality and being a trickster, especially tricking Moana into taking her boat for selfish needs and not hearing her out or even giving her a chance to speak and including stealing the heart of Tefiti. Yes, the movie fully explains the accomplishments he did into why he does it to make mankind happy, but in the movie he seems egotistical by responding, you're welcome to Moana to be thanked for what he did when really she just bumped into him. The real Maui wanted to better the lives of mankind and for himself because he was also affected by it. Honestly, when I first saw the film, I had no idea who Maui was nor about Polynesian mythology. But hey, we are on a learning adventure together. What symbolism did you guys catch in the movie Moana that I didn't? I know I didn't clarify these lines. I couldn't find anything here, but honestly, Maui is an important and very busy demigod like how he says in the song. Kid, honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was Maui just messing around. Well, this video was shorter than the other ones. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, remember, I'm Awesome Fire. I am out like a candle. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.